Good morning, everyone. My name is Alexis Roos, and at Salesforce, I lead a team of data scientists and engineers focusing on building intelligent services from activity data. And today, I will discuss how we use Spark to build our services. This presentation will cover some future developments, and uh, Salesforce being a publicly traded company, I have to remind you to only make purchasing decisions based on products that are commercially available today. Salesforce offers a comprehensive customer success platform that allows our users to offer a unique customer experience. We are thrilled with the success we have achieved together with our customers and partners, and are thrilled to have been called Innovator of the Decade and named one of the Fortune's best place to work eight years in a row. We are most proud of how our customers are innovating, disrupting market, transforming industries, and developing new business models. It is estimated by, that by 2020, our community and company will create over $400 billion in GDP impact and create 2 million jobs. For many, 2016 was the year that AI finally came of age. In our personal lives, AI is now everywhere. Using an LP, Siri is providing you a personal assistant that has transformed the way you are looking for, wherever you are. Using machine learning, Amazon pours recommendation, allowing you to shop more efficiently. And using deep learning, Facebook powers face recognition in photos, allowing you to deepen your, deepen your social graph. So today, the best consumer applications are powered by AI, and it has transformed our customer expectations on the level of service they should expect and receive from Salesforce. Our customer success platform is the world number one CRM and covers a spectrum of customer you know, interactions from sales, marketing, service, commerce, community, and capabilities with Internet of Things, applications, and analytic clouds. Over the last few years, Salesforce has embarked in adding AI right into our platform and all our applications to deliver the world's smartest CRM. And Salesforce has made over $600 million investments in companies related to intelligence, ranging from analytics to machine learning or deep learning. Using our customer you know, data and a deep understanding of the customer experience, we are working on making all our applications you know, smarter through our instant initiative. Today, I am specifically going to discuss what we are doing in Sales Cloud and for our Inbox product. Salesforce Inbox is a suite of applications for our sales users designed to improve their productivity through integrations of communication, including automated capture and logging of, uh, of activity data into Salesforce, including emails, meetings, or phone calls, which create a foundation for AI, sharing of activity data to increase collaboration and unify customer experience, and transforming some of that activity data into insight to suggest users what they should do next. And finally, it is a suite of desktop and mobile applications, so users can sell from anywhere, their uh, desktop where they work, but also their mobile when they, when they are on the world. Uh, sorry, if we can play the video now. Roll the video. Salesforce Inbox streamlines your sales workflow so you can spend more time connecting with customers and closing deals. Surface relevant CRM data like leads, contacts, and opportunities on every email to help you craft the perfect response. Then update your pipeline in real time so your forecast is always up to date. Prioritize your day with suggested tasks and make sure nothing slips through the cracks with intelligent reminders. Use Salesforce email templates and cloud integrations like Salesforce Files and Box to keep deals moving forward. And when you click Send, easily log sales activities so your team always has contacts to help on a deal. Shorten your sales cycle by using dynamic scheduling to book customer meetings faster and share your availability to find a meeting time with one email. Prepare for every customer call with 360-degree contact profiles filled with intelligent insights so you can anticipate customer needs. When you follow up, monitor customer engagement with email tracking to get notifications that inform next steps. And once the deal closes, connect directly to the Salesforce One mobile app to update status. Sell smarter and faster with Inbox from Salesforce. Thank you. Now that I'll show you a short video to see what the current product looks like, let me tell you about some of the main problems we are solving. Uh, salespeople cannot keep up with the sheer volume of emails, and it is known that if they don't answer you within the day, they, they will certainly not. 
given the sheer volume of activity, it is very hard for them to prioritize and quickly follow up. Offering near real-time insights is a challenge. Recommendations do not leverage uh, contact information, such as, is this email from a customer? Is it related to an opportunity? Overall, there is a missed opportunity to learn from the best, such as which actions provide you know, the best result. Using AI, we can make Salesforce in inbox smarter. Users can stay on top of what matters, which is, for instance, identifying important emails uh, from customers or hot new leads. We can derive insights from emails and suggest what actions users should take next, such as recommending a specific follow-up at the right time. In addition, we want to capture and organize contact information and use it to reinforce models and improve recommendations. This requires building a complex and efficient data pipeline organized in four main logical steps shown on the left. We first acquire email in real time through our crawlers and put them on a Kafka queue. We use streaming to process each email individually. We use natural language processing to be able to extract names, titles, and other information from email metadata and signature, and we generate text features. We then use machine learning and deep learning to identify insights such as origin is the email, is a meeting requested, is pricing being discussed, is a competitor mentioned, was a key stakeholder added, and so on. We then suggest actions such as smart reply, envoltimate, send reminder, and so forth. Each, each enriched email is then put back into another Kafka queue. We then process you know, that enriched email at the level of opportunity, where we can start looking at additional use cases, such as, for instance, opportunity health, based on all the events you know, happening through uh, the CRM data, in addition to the activity data. And we can uh, uh, do actions you know, and suggestions you know, at that level as well. In addition, we put you know, that enriched data uh, and feed that to an historical context graph, where uh, we will basically keep Keep context for the user over time, allowing to connect and reinforce model. So let me give you a quick example of what we will be showing for the demo. In that scenario, we are simulating a sales campaign from a sales rep. So this is a very typical operation for salespeople to send mass email to a few hundred of prospects. In that case, we will basically detect responses from the users uh, using our uh, streaming you know, uh, real-time capabilities, but also we will know which users have read emails also through uh, email you know, uh, track tracking rece receipts. Uh, we then uh, use you know, natural language processing and machine learning to generate a few insights. For the sake of the demo here, we will use pricing and sentiment. So I will show you that using sentiment allows us to keep track of positive responses. Uh, we can then use that to suggest that there's a hot lead uh, that the sales rep should follow up you know, promptly. But then in addition to, I will show you that we're using the context graph that we built from the activity that will allow us to reinforce the model and uh, provide for an actually better you know, recommendation. I will now switch to the demonstration part. Very good. You can see here that I have a, a cluster running a uh, small cluster running. So we're going to go through uh, the scenario. So in that scenario, we will create a contact graph from the email organization data. Then a sales rep, Dave, will create an email campaign and send it to a number of prospects. We will then process Dave's inbox and detect a hot lead that is a positive response to his email campaign. We'll then use a contact graph to provide an optimal recommendation. Uh, for this demo, we are loading data from A3, but you're streaming for production, and a lot of the code is hidden in cells uh, for simplification. Uh, so I already have uh, the notebook uh, available, connected, and basically it has run before, so I will go over the code and ruin some of the cells you know, as needed. You can see in that scenario that we are developing a few case classes that will allow to model the graph, so specifically contact, that is a simplified version, where we'll use email first name and last name. And then for the ages, 
we will use you know a trait and then simply have two subclasses sub, uh, case classes one being count edge that will allow to count the number of you know interactions between uh, two uh, contacts and topic edge that will keep track of the list of topics that are being discussed we load email data uh, we are essentially using that from our own organization and the data has been anonymized, so the names that you will see are actually fixtures. Uh, we let some NLP library, and after that, we can start running some simple statistics, like, for instance, seeing the number of emails. So in that data set, this is only, I think, uh, a month worth of emails. So we have about 190,000 emails, and we can see already that we can do some basic work count to look at the most popular words. We can then build first the vertices, for the graph, so here we only have to flat map the recipients in the email, so we can generate you know, all the pairs, uh, because of course email might have multiple recipients. So we flat map that, and then we do this thing. In that case, we have to region with names, because name has been anonymized, so the name will show you, uh, be showing you again our features. So we can create that, and then we can then create you know, edges, which are basically, again, looking at uh, sender to recipient, creating, you know, uh, account for that and then reducing so we can get uh, essentially uh, an aggregated count uh, between two users. Uh, we can then build a graph once you know this is done and we can of course run some basic statistics on the graph like for instance the number of connected components, uh, the number of contacts, the number of relationships and so forth. We can easily do uh, distribution of high degrees so here we're looking at uh, number of, you know, our degree we have uh, for, con for giving uh, for across contacts through bin distribution, so you can easily change the plotting uh, through Databricks. Uh, we can easily uh, use basic statistics on the graph to see, for instance, uh, who sends the most email by using their degree and joining, you know, with vertices. And again, the names here are fictitious, but the relationship and the counts, you know, are real. Uh, and we can also use the in-degree, for instance, to see who will receive the most email. We have a few more functions here we'll use uh, for being able to map uh, contacts and do some uh, sorting of priority. So here, one of the things we want to do for the sake of the demo is figure out what the strongest connection. So we use a very simplified version here where we essentially use the number of uh, outgoing and incoming uh, connection for users. So between two users that are communicating, uh, one user might be sending a lot of email, but another might be uh, uh, might, might not be responding. So it's very important that we look at uh, a relationship you know, between uh, those two variables. So we essentially apply that on the list of edges we have, and we can now uh, look at essentially who are the strongest you know, connected people uh, within our graph, which we will use you know, later. Now, going back to the scenario, devs create a marketing email and send it to a number of prospects. Uh, so you can see in that case, we are sending to 300 people. Uh, we are capable, through our know, coding technology, uh, detecting uh, in real time who's replaying, uh, actually also who's reading emails. This is a function we have in Inbox. Uh, and in that particular scenario, we are just showing one new positive response, all the other one being negative. And so we want to inform Dave that Sam you know, is interested. So here we load you know, some uh, sentiment analyzer, so you can use you know, bag of words, NBSVM, deep learning, and so forth. We are essentially looking for uh, all the email that Dev uh, sent, uh, uh, received, sorry, so where is the recipient, looking for the one that was for his uh, marketing campaign, and we are using essentially a scoring function, and we can see that we have a new response being tagged. So now that allows us to tell essentially Dave uh, in real time that there was a positive response to his campaign just by using some basic you know, insight from the email. So Dave could now reach out to Sam directly, but there's a better way. We want to start leveraging you know, some of the context, uh, context as well. So we can see that Dave has a number of connections. So we will uh, basically uh, use you know, triplets now to subgraph to essentially uh, Sam only. So look at who's connected to Sam in our organization. In, a, in that case, this is a rather large organization. So we can essentially subset. So I will skip you know, going through all the code. But we can eventually create a subgraph sub and even visualize the graph. And in that scenario, this is a rather large organization. So Sam is connected to a lot of people. So this is you know, not that helpful. But what we can do 
is look, for instance, at what types of relationship, what were the topics being discussed between Sam and some of you know, Dave's colleagues. So we can do a simple you know, topic. So in that case, we create a simple bag of words. But again, uh, we'll do something more sophisticated where we can uh, look for emails uh, that are uh, uh, discussing those particular topics. And this is something also that we will do in real time. So while acquiring emails, we'll do that function right away. We were doing it later for the sake of the demo. So in that case, based on that topic, we cannot create a relationship between you know, individual and add the fact that there was a pricing being discussed. And now, what we can do is subset the graph to some with essentially people that have discussed in a pricing relationship. So we can reapply what we had before and essentially filter based on the topic edge. And we can see that there's a number of contacts within you know, the organization that are you know, Dev's colleagues that have spoken you know, to Sam and that have discussed pricing before. So these people have gone through various stages of the opportunity. And now, using the contact graph, we essentially find everyone that, that's connected with Sam. But now we can even do better. We can reuse the closest connection, the strongest connection function we have defined before to further filter and apply a value relationship to see out of those people who have discussed pricing with Sam, who is the strongest you know, person? What's the strongest you know, relationship? Not just the fact that one email was sent, right? but there was a lot of emails essentially back and forth. Uh, and in that case, we see that Sam is connected to Rebecca. Uh, and then what we can suggest is uh, we can suggest Dave now that uh, there's a whole hit coming from Sam, but instead of answering to Sam directly, he should probably check out with Becky because Becky you know, had, had a relationship with Sam before. And uh, the, the beauty of that is that we can do that in large organization, even if Dave basically doesn't know Becky, which is very typical in large organization uh, for various salespeople to try to sell to the same person based on different products. And we can essentially solve you know, that, that, that problem. And now we'll go back to the slides to uh, wrap up the presentation. So, so from the demo, you've probably realized a few things. We want to tell users why an email is important, but we don't want to stop there. We also want to tell them what they should do about it. The suggested action is very important for us. And this requires you know, context, which is why uh, for emails, context can completely change the meaning of data uh, and the action we recommend to the user. So in that case, by using the context and the contact graph, we essentially provide that for a better recommendation. In our case, streaming, Batch, machine learning, and graph are very complementary you know, for our use cases. Uh, I did not go in depth with that, but privacy is very important to us, and this requires a significant infrastructure, such as, for instance, multi-tenancy, uh, where we have to create you know, and train model only for a specific organization. And finally, Databricks Cloud is a great platform to use, and we use extensively for analytics, visualization, reporting, or training some of the models. It is a very exciting time to join Salesforce. As you might have seen, uh, we are building AI throughout you know, our applications. So we are looking for engineers and data scientists to join our team. And so please check out our openings. Thank you very much.